Hello everyone, welcome back. It's Space Engineers plus me, episode 27. I'm an Igmeus and today, kind of a light episode. Last episode was pretty heavy, a lot of technical details, a lot of information. This one is just a bit of a tour of the Dauntless, which is going to be the ship that we're taking to the moon. It's taking a while to build. We're going to go into a little bit of detail as to why that is, but for now, we're taking a look at the underside. Now, previously we had set it up so that we had some pistons and some rotors and some merge blocks and we were going to have these landing gears that could rotate up into the chassis and then rotate down when you wanted to use them. I didn't really have a lot of faith in them and I kind of felt if you're going to have a system like that where you're micromanaging everything to that extent, it better work every single time or have a very good reason for not working uh, as opposed to just like smushing things and having everything blow out the back end of the ship because something that doesn't make any sense so I changed it around we removed the bays where we had that whole assembly we removed the whole assembly we placed the landing gears directly on the chassis and then we replaced the lights because I was really fond of the purple lights so we kind of gave them their own concealed sconces you can see the light shining out you can even see the lights inside but from the right angle you can't see the spotlight itself it's all covered up we're going to pretend it's there to offer protection from space debris and things. But really, it was just, I wanted to do something for the lights that was a little bit more than just kind of plonking them onto the hull and leaving them there. So that's what we did. That's that's the underside of the ship. Oh, hydrogen rockets, hydrogen thrusters. We've got four of them on the underside. We've got two here and two more over there. It's kind of interesting how all of this plays out because one of the things that we haven't had to worry about being almost entirely on uh, a planet is thrusters on the top of a ship to push it down because we've had gravity helping us with that. In the similar line of thought, we have to kind of give a little bit of thought to how we're getting around in space with the thrusters on the underside, with the thrusters on the rear, what are you going to be using to be getting out of the atmosphere of the planet? Uh, which is this, the first step towards getting to the moon. So we've got four hydrogen thrusters on the underside, uh, which is less than the number of atmospheric thrusters that we would have had on a similarly sized ship. But that's because we've got a bunch of thrusters on the back, and I wanted to make sure that we weren't overloading with thrusters and wasting fuel. So that was kind of the thing there. Now we're going to go into jetpack mode here. I think that's basically everything to see on the underside. There's some thrusters on the side that will be used for lateral movement. We always have to have something on the side to help us move left and right, side to side. We've got six thrusters on the rear and a little viewport so you can look outside and see uh, space, basically, from the view of the thrusters. It'll be a combination of the underside thrusters and these thrusters that'll be helping us get off the planet. And it's just a question of making sure that when we leave, we don't have so much stuff that we're taking with us that we can't get out of the gravity well with the thrusters that we have. So I'm hoping that this will be enough uh, between everything, the ones on the underside and the ones here. Because one of the first things we have to do when we lift off is we have to kind of aim the ship in an upwards direction in order to get the benefit of these six thrusters here for pushing us through the, the atmosphere and out of the gravity well. So that's why we have four thrusters on the bottom. On the flip side of that coin is when we're coming in for a landing, uh, even if it's on the moon and we want to slow down, having a couple of extra thrusters on the underside uh, relative to the other locations on the ship will hopefully help with that. And also when we come back to the planet, uh, we also want to make sure that we have thrusters to help slow our descent uh, through the atmosphere so we don't just kind of bounce off the surface of the planet and game over. So there's the, the rear thrusters, these are the uh, reverse thrusters, and a radio antenna. Uh, if you were playing the game with the thruster damage rule turned on, you would probably <laughs> you would probably see some damage to the top of the hull here from these thrusters here. I, I kind of, there was a part of me that wanted me to build as though we had the rule turned on but then there was a part of me that says nah we're not no we're not really that super concerned about it we built these and then we kind of built the hull after the fact so that's kind of what's going on there here are the two thrusters that are going to be responsible for helping us move down in an atmosphere or in an environment where we don't have gravity taking care of that for us obviously we've still got to weld these guys up 
And then as far as the the hull goes, I've been slowly working my way forward. And we add some things, and then we work on the hull, and then we add some things, and then we work on the hull. It takes a little while. I, I refer to it as sculpting. Making changes to the hull, making tweaks to the hull after we looked at things for a little while, or we add something that changed the nature of what was going on. It's uh, it's time consuming, but I enjoy it. So that's why we invest the time. It's not because we have to. It's because we want to. And then there's all this stuff that's going on inside the ship itself. We're starting the process of getting all of our machines in place. We're observing our color codes uh, as closely as I can this time around, as opposed to just ignoring them for the sake of convenience. You'll see these big um, wells, I guess you could say, these sort of structures out of the armor blocks. There's one here. And then there's another one right there. These are what is allowing for the hydrogen thrusters on the underside of the ship to be recessed so that the uh, edge of the thruster is flush with the hull so they don't stick out of the bottom of the hull. That's really all they're for. Uh, in this case up here, I chose to build it above the hull. So we kind of have a little bit of a surround around the thrusters, but underneath we kind of had to make a little bit of extra room. So that's what we did there. And then we have four refineries this big cluster right here is four refineries. The idea is not that we need four refineries to process things four times faster. It's that we want to make sure that if one refinery is stuck processing uranium when we feed it, uh, you know, the system platinum to start refining, that it's not going to have to wait until it's done with the uranium before it starts with the platinum. There will be another refinery available to do that. And then we have 12 oxygen generators for processing ice. We're going to be bringing quite a lot of ice with us in the ship, and I want to be a little bit careful about that because, like I say, we don't want to be loading up the weight beyond what the thrusters can lift when we're trying to get out of the atmosphere, but at the same time, the ice is kind of like our reserve fuel because the oxygen generators, of course, produce oxygen, which we will need because we're going into space, but also hydrogen, and then the hydrogen will be stored in these hydrogen tanks towards the rear of the ship and there's a total of 12 large hydrogen tanks back here that are all interconnected so that they all can kind of drain uh, wherever they need to go and will hopefully provide us when they're full with enough fuel to get out of the atmosphere if it doesn't provide us with enough fuel with these 12 um there's a little bit of room we could add some more i suppose I'd rather not have to. I'd rather be able to just get out of the atmosphere and get where we need to go with 12 hydrogen tanks uh, and then process ice to make more hydrogen as we go. So that's kind of where we're at. Now, that's by no means the end of this build. I mean, it's not like we're done now and we're closing in the hull and then it'll be good to go. We'll be going to the moon and everything will be happy. We still need oxygen tanks to store the oxygen that we're producing from the oxygen generators uh, because these are just like anything else. They don't really store a whole lot. They just process it and then they pass it along. We need storage containers things so, so that we can store things like ice, minerals that we mine up on the on the moon, uh, various different construction components and resources, refined resources to make more construction components so that we can make things like um, moon mining vessels and things of that nature when we're up there. We need arc furnaces for processing the base metals so that we can take the load off of the refineries, let the refineries focus on the rarer stuff and things like iron, nickel and cobalt will pass off to the arc furnaces to handle we're going to have at least one med bay in the ship here somewhere. We need lots and lots of lights all over the place. I really like the purple under lighting, uh, and there will probably be more purple on the outside of the hull, but inside, it, I, I can imagine it would get very hard on the eyes, so we're just going to have plain white lights uh, throughout so that when the hull is closed in, we can still see where we're going, whether the, the light in our suit is shining or not. Uh, we're going to need connectors on the exterior of the ship so that we can dock uh, mining vessels and cargo vessels and things of that nature. It's kind of difficult to imagine, uh, you know, going anywhere now without a couple of support vessels with us. So we're going to have connectors on the outside, of course. And we still need to make oxygen tanks that we can carry around for our suit as backup. Because the actual oxygen tank in your suit doesn't last worth a damn. <laughs> it goes very very fast and if we don't have tanks that we can carry with us similar to what we're doing with the hydrogen tanks it's going to be problematic so we're going to make sure we have plenty of oxygen tanks with us that we can charge up we can refill them 
and then carry on about our business without having to worry about suffocating on the moon. So that's basically what we're doing, and it's taking a while, so we just did a nice little tour of what we've got so far. The next episode, I think, we should be ready to go to the moon. We'll have all the things that I mentioned in place. The hull will be closed in. We'll take a quick look at what we've got, and then we'll be off to the moon, and we'll land on the moon, and then we'll take a look at what we need to do to get started exploiting the resources on the moon. Realistically, we're going to the moon for platinum. <laughs> That's, that's, we're going all the way to the moon for platinum, so we're going to make sure that we take a look around while we're up there, but really, once we find platinum and we get a pretty decent chunk of it into the ship, we'll probably be coming back here to start thinking about what we can do uh, for the next interplanetary journey, which will involve an even larger ship with even more stuff, more storage for fuel, ion thrusters, all kinds of crazy stuff, so if you want to be notified about those episodes upcoming... The easiest way to do that is to subscribe to my channel or follow me on social media. Links for social media are always in the information box below the video. Feel free to leave your comments and feedback. Thanks for watching, guys, and take care.